For the rest of our section on an introduction to statistical thermodynamics, we're going to look at how we can evaluate partition functions for some simple cases, uh, simple being relative here, uh, of ideal gases. So we'll look at both monatomic and diatomic. Your book does go into uh, polyatomic as well, but we're going to ignore that and just look at diatomic. Um, and, and some of the mathematical ideas we can use to find actual functions uh, that describe the partition functions in these cases. Uh, sometimes we'll, sometimes it makes more sense to just write out all the energies and do a sum. Sometimes it makes more sense to do some of the approximations we'll talk about. So just to recap from our previous chapter and video, if we want to find the system partition function, we want to find the molecular or atomic partition function, raise that to the n divided by n factorial to get what we need for the system. Now for that molecular partition function, we can separate this overall molecular partition function into different parts. We can have electronic energy, we can have vibrational energy, rotational energy, and translational energy. Uh, and these are the different types of energy that are present in our system. And we're going to look at these one by one. Uh, in, uh, going from the way I've written them here, we're going to start here and go this way. Um, basically in terms of what are the, the spacings of the energy levels. For translation, the spacings are very, very small. Um, Rotational, they get a little bit bigger. Vibrational, they're fairly decently spaced apart. And electronic have very large energy spacings. Um, now, before we start doing this, there's one slight modification for little q that we need to make to the, um, to the uh, definition of the partition function. So for big Q, we wrote that it's equal to the sum over our possible energies, e to the minus beta e sub j. Um, the difference we make for little q is that we often have energies that are degenerate, um, right? So if we talk about J being an energy state, we can think about, say, S and P orbitals. For an S orbital, there's only one of them. Uh, but for a P orbital, we have three different possibilities. So if we would say that the degeneracy of the S orbitals is equal to 1 whereas the degeneracy for the p orbitals is equal to 3, because there's three different orbitals that have the exact same energy. Um, but each of these states counts, right? Uh, we need to count you know, the px, py, and pz if we want to label them that way. right? Each of those states counts towards the partition function, so we need to keep track of that. Um, but rather than, rather than writing the same energy three times, what we do instead is that we say, OK, let's add up instead of for each j, which is each energy state, Let's look at each energy level, meaning all the, all the levels that have the same energy, and then multiply by the degeneracy of that level. So that allows us to take into account this degeneracy without having to write you know, terms multiple times. Um, and so that is what allows us to, um, this, so that's the modification we need uh, to be able to take this into account. Uh, so in the next video, we'll start looking at the translational partition function and how we can look at the energy levels, um, the inf information we get from quantum mechanics of looking at single particles to build that up to, uh, you know, what are the energy levels and how can we write the partition function for that.